And third, stop first-time sex crimes. Now, I'll introduce our plan. First, before leaving prison, judges, psychologists, and criminalists will form a team to assess the criminal's mental status. They will be graded according to the severity of the crime they commit, the possibility of their recommitting the crime, and the threat they pose to society. There are four levels, low risk, medium risk, high risk, and serious rated. Each level has a different time limit and range for publicizing their personal information on the police internet, including name, photo, residence only to a country or city, and those around it, and the crime type they commit. Only for a serious rated, the government will publicize the information actively. As for the other three grades, the public needs to apply the information in the police station. The applicants need to propose reasons for the suspicion of the person who they are suspecting. After verifying their motivation being reasonable, the central will give the information to the local police stations, then the police will give it to the applicants. By publicizing a certain amount of information, we can make sure that not only the public is aware, but the sex offender's privacy is also properly protected. At the same time, potential sex criminals and police are regularly reminded that they are running the risk of being recognized. In South Korea, after sex offenders' personal information being publicized, among 1,662 of them, only two committed crimes again. With our plan, a better and safer society will be created. Thus, we the affirmative contend that the Taiwan government should make public sex offenders' personal information. Thank you. I'm now ready for cross-examination.
in a in a previous cross examination, uh, my partner had proved to, had proved to the judges that the recidivism rate is only 3.7 of sex offenders will recommit a crime, and we also have a, a study from Ministry of Justice that only 3.7 will recommit the sexual offense. It proves that in Taiwan, the criminals have exceptionally low recidivism rates. Therefore, we can prove that only an extremely small minority of the criminals were recommit a crime. And the policy that the formative had contended is actually invading the right of the majority of sex offenders. In addition, publicizing their information has little deterrent impact on the criminals. Take Vegas law as a sample. According to the Chicago Journal, 2014, registered offenders even have higher rates of recidivism. The main reason of Megan's law failure is that the purpose of punishment is to educate the criminal, not to revenge. Making public sex offenders personal information is a lifelong punishment. It will definitely bring the rest of the life, and never giving those people a chance to return to their original lives. Different from other punishments, the status of sex offender will tell them in their whole life. It will, it will cause them more harm to their mental development. As a result, they will have difficulties in finding a job or places to live, and everybody will look down on them. If everybody despises them, they will not have the motivation to become a good person after getting out of jail. The same as the whole society gives up someone and tax them as a sex offender, they will give up their life too. According to a report from the Ministry of Justice, people who commit sexual abuse are usually the, the ones who have strong sense of inferiority and antisocial personality. Hence, the tag of sex offenders will increase their sense of inferiority and antisocial personality and make them become more motivated to commit a crime. A sex offender in Western constant even said, No one believes I can, I can change, so why even try? Furthermore, publicizing their personal information will not only punish the sex offenders, but also make the disreputable status tell their innocent family. In Chinese culture, we view children's wrong behavior as the responsibility of the parents. Hence, for parents whose children are labeled as sex offenders will be insulted by, uh, by the others. And in addition, according to the According to a report from the Ministry of Justice, uh, according to REI and, and sexual assault is one of the most underreported crimes, with 60% still being that unreported. Most sex offenders never become part of the criminal justice system and therefore are not affected by the registry.
the only position we have is not going to public their publicizing their information. Okay. And Show there are more than um, 46% of 
convicts that have been rated, rated as high risk convicts commit committed crimes again. Although not, it yeah, might not be sex crimes. Actually, there's only 3.7 already committed crimes. So how can you it's, say it's not? It's not crimes. It's we commit sex crimes. We have to be clear. It's sex crimes. That's 3.7 percent. But 46 percent commit crimes, and it's in general. And we believe, although they might not be committing sex crime again, they are still committing crimes again. And although there's only 3.7 percent, these people are still invading other people's human rights. Okay, we'll move to the next question. Uh, you have mentioned that the, the norm, uh, in your constitutional speech, the normal citizen will know the sex offenders is in their neighborhood. Yes. So, how can you say that uh, politicizing their information is helping them easily get back to the society? Because we believe that these, these since these are you need to apply for these and it takes time and it takes steps. We believe people will not ask for these information so easily like I see him walking on the street and I say, oh, he's suspicious and I'll go apply. Okay, so you mean that they can easily affect the society means that uh, they can be accepted by, the, by other citizens? Well, a, a section or not is up to the citizens, but we are, give, we are doing our best to give them so jobs you don't know that the and, a, and supplies. Them or not. Citizens, I believe, we believe citizens are, Taiwanese citizens are smart enough to determine whether they will accept them or not. So we'll move to the next question. Second, next is Chocolate Seed. Four minutes. Greetings all. First of all, <coughs> we may like to uh, recheck the inherency and the damage and all that uh, that needed with the government here. First of all, let's look at inherency. The uh, government tried to prove that we need to publicize sex offenders information because that the sex crime is rate rising. And because a majority of them are committed during the daytime and they said they say that this problem is caused by the electric shackle, which is a device to track and monitor sex offenders, are not open during the day. So they say that this is going to be a big problem in our society. So they, they, uh, they have provided one way to publicize their uh, offenders information. Now, we negatively we negative like to ask that if your the informant said that the problem is because of the electric shackle is not open during the day, then why sh shouldn't we just turn down the electric shackle during the day, then we can solve the problem? Why is the need that we need to publicize public offenders' information to violate their personal right, but you cannot guarantee the results are in our favor? So in this case, that we can prove that if we open the electric shackle at the, at, during the day, that we can reduce this sexual crimes because that's the problem they say. So there isn't really an inherency in their, uh, in their uh, position. Next, uh, we have to check on the, the harms that have their, their laws provided to us as that. First of all, uh, as we mentioned that these sex awareness personal information, if they are public, then this information will go online forever. In this modern society, the uh, in internet are developing so uh, overwhelmed that once any information are, are public, then these information are undeletable. So the government must be aware that all information in these states are uh, accessible by all by all citizens in our days. So it's a great value to the sexual awareness of personal rights. Uh, next, let's move on to. Uh, the majority of the sex crime have received them. Uh, we have again stated that only 3.7% of sex criminals have recommitted sex crimes. And although that 40% of them have recommitted crimes, but we have to think this again, that the problem we are solving now is sex offenders. So if these sex offenders do not commit sex crime again, then why is the need that we have to monitor them so tightly that we can debate their personal rights. So only 3% of them, uh, the government just said that because only 3% of them are working to make such crime again, so we have to monitor them. But that's a valid to the
the 96.3% of the sex criminals. So this is a greater cost and benefit it will bring. The next, uh, we negatively like to raise the question that if uh, the 60% of sex crime are unreported, underreported, so the awareness you are raising between the citizens are only false security. Because uh, if a person who is living in uh, an area with which that show has no actual sex offenders, but actually there are 60% of sex crime underreported, then this person may be in a dangerous environment, but he was not aware of it. And because of your law, that they will be they will not pay attention to their surroundings because they think they are safe. So, uh, the point is actually creating a false sense of security to our public by publishing sex awareness information. Uh, last but not least, uh, the sex awareness of family will be... Uh, it's a time top? Oh, sorry. I'm re now ready for questions and information. Just for the timers, you, if the time is up, you can actually state time is up. You can hold the sign, but if they're not responding, tell them. That's all. That's a lot of problems. Okay. Second, affirmative person, Daniel Good morning. Um, first of all, let me ask you. Uh, so you're say, stating that the negative side are trying to turn on the electric shackle during daytime. Well, that's because uh, you, uh, the is, is that correct? Yes, because the form did so say that, is that, that so the is that, caused by um, electric shackle. So, they are, so you are sta also stating that our law is monitoring the while the sex offenders too tightly. And well, do you? But do you? Are you aware that how the electric tackle is operating? Uh, if you'd like to explain to us that here. So, um, the electric tackle tries tra tracks down the person's location, and if they turn it on on day, do you, won't you think that's still monitoring like 24 hours, like where you're going? So, well, does that sound sound as monitoring tightly? Sex awareness personal information and turn out the electric shackle during the day is that these information are not public. They are only monitored by the government if we turn out the electric shackle. But by public sex awareness personal information, this will be a lifelong punishment so, um, to them to a sex crime. However, um, but let's just say this. You think 3.7% of them are like not important? No, it's not not important. But then we why have are you not solving this part? Why do you think this is not by Doing this method that you are valuing another majority of the minority. Do you think that turning on electric shackles on these people are violating their law, their personal rights? Well, there is a difference between valid, how far you value. You public you violate, a, is, okay. you violate a person's 24 hours location and you well, violate that. Right, you think this is not, that so is it's not, not open to the society. But your plan is to public sex awareness personal information they, to the flyers. The electric tackle only shows the location. How are we going to prevent the sex crimes? But but now, the board has said that problem is only caused by. We did not state that problems are only caused by well, electric shackles. The, the and what makes you? What leads you to the, the, this? Because the board raised example to prove that the harm is. Thank you. Five minutes
the second vendor, and also we have the we have the education thing and therapy and all those things. And today, the only thing that the we uh, from here is doing is giving limited staff. I would like to repeat, limited staff to citizens. You have mentioned that we have a very very a very very secure SOP. For how the citizens is going to get? Uh, as the second affirmative mentioned, well, uh, we have experts for uh, fighting and monitoring that the, uh, the applicants are suitable for getting these kind of information. And furthermore, I would like to recall to violating privacy. Uh, the, the, my fellow debaters didn't, didn't tell you, like the slide, that we're actually following the UK's law, the United Kingdom's law, and we're more like them. So, because the Nexus law didn't ask for our evidence for so we didn't able to give them the evidence for that we are following the UK. And through the past 15 years, well, the United Kingdom shows very, very successful through doing this kind of stuff. And they have shown that the sex offenders is not insecure. They have investigated the sex offenders, and they say that they are not insecure. They think that this is a part of rehabilitation, and for them to secure themselves from not committing a crime. And at the end, I would like to recall that 3.7% is not a low rate. Every year, there are 47,000 cases happening. And 3.7% is like 160 child getting abused, getting offended. And this is not just a number. We're talking about each number represents a child getting abused, getting offended, that their lives have a score on them. And we are, help, we are trying to help these victims from get their preventing victims increasing, and that's our goal. And it's our responsibility for everyone in this room to help these child from getting sexually offensive. Thank you. Exactly, and also this is the In five minutes, we'll have a job with us comments about both team performances. Now, please wait outside.